Have you ever experienced this kind of terror? Suddenly receiving a phone call from his family late at night. This man is facing that kind of fear. He received the call and held his breath without a thought of sleep. But nonetheless, what he feared most still happened. He sat on the edge of the bed for a long time until he heard his wife's voice. My mom died. Jack and his wife had seen very little of his mother since she had moved to another city. Even their children were completely unfamiliar with their grandmother. Which grandma died? Daddy's mommy died. Daddy's mommy is dead. Stop saying she's dead. But she is dead. Right, Daddy? Although the children's words didn't have any malicious intent, Jack still felt a stabbing pain in his heart. He did not have time to explain the meaning of death to them. He set out alone on a long journey to find with his mother's spirit. Many years ago, he followed the same path to take his mother away from his abusive father. His mother decided to live far away from her son, so as not to cause him any trouble. She moved to another city to live with her cousin. But since having three children, it was difficult for Jack to find time to visit his mother. And his mother only came once, when the children were a week old, out of fear of being found by her husband. Although they seldom saw each other, the mother and son still insisted on talking to each other once a week. On Sundays at 6, the mother was always worried about taking up too much of Jack's time, so she would end each call with these words. Don't let me keep you. Okay, Ma, I'll, I'll talk to you next Sunday. I love you. When Jack had children, his mother was always thinking about the family. She listened to their happiness with a smile on her face. She used to talk about a pond outside the house that would freeze over in the winter, wishing Jack would bring the children over to skate. Jack said yes, saying that he would bring them when they were older. But his mother didn't wait for that day, and now he would never hear a call from her again. Jack arrives at his mother's cousin's house, where his mother was living, with endless guilt and an ache in his heart. Here, he discovered another side of his mother that he didn't know. The room was filled with Jack's photos and the floor was covered with unknitted balls of wool. Apparently this was for scarves that she was planning to make for her grandchildren. All of these decorations show how deeply she missed her son. And to Jack's surprise, his mother also had a cat. A cat that now belonged to him and another man. Hey cat, why don't you go back to Mike's? Who's Mike? He is your mom's boyfriend. Jack was dumbfounded and out of curiosity, he found the man with the cat in his arms. Mike seemed to have guessed that Jack would come, warmly welcoming him in. Seeing his smiling mother in their photo together, Jack realized he had never really known her. She was also a woman who longed for love. She could have been happy like this, but instead spent most of her life in the hands of his scumbag father. I always knew how to make her laugh. She had a great laugh. Can't remember my smile, my mother -in Others told him how lively and vivid his mother had been, and Jack felt so guilty. All these years, he was so busy with his work and family that he missed the best of his mother. He lamented that he hadn't freed her earlier. Let me tell you this. Nothing was more important to her than your Sunday calls. She looked forward to them all week. You're her hero, Jack. The next day Jack finds ice skates his mother had bought for the children under the bed. And he remembers the promise he made with her. Hello? I never took her to the pond by my mom's house. To ice skate. She's such a long drive and could never really find the time. At the funeral, Jack is at a loss for words and any words at this point seem empty and lifeless. At that moment, Rebecca arrives with her three children, giving Jack courage and strength. He confessed that his childhood had not been a happy one. Although he and his mother had escaped from that house, once a person has lived in a house like that, there is always a part of them that cannot escape. They can only keep creating new memories to cover up the unpleasant past. I don't know if she was ever able to forget any of the details of that house, but I do know she filled up her life with new ones. One's worth remembering. A dish of chocolates, a basket of yarn, a cat. It keeps coming back. The wife and children sitting watching him off stage had given Jack a new life. He was able to have a happy family after his misfortune. Hey, okay, Mom, don't let me keep you. After the funeral, Jack took his children to the pond where his mother had always wanted to skate. Looking at his children's joyful forms, he could not help but think back to his childhood. He always liked to sneak out to go skiing. And when he came back, his mother would always make him a hot dog and tomato soup. This was one of the few bright spots in Jack's childhood, and a precious memory he shared with his mother. Now he has children of his own. On this windy and snowy night, he imitated his mother for the first time, making the same hot dog and tomato soup for the children. Looking at the warm scene in front of him, Jack couldn't help but think of his mother again. He 
finally couldn't hold back his tears and stepped aside to try to control his emotions. I'm not mom anymore. This is the most miserable loner I've ever seen. He has lived for more than 20 years and never even learned to flirt. The girl he likes is dropping hints. But he started to talk about the knowledge of the universe and the technology of the moon meant the girl takes the initiative to invite him to the mountain to enjoy the moon. His heart beats faster, but he's too shy to speak. Well, I, you should have a great night, but I, I, my brother's probably waiting for me, so... Okay. Bye. Luckily, his brother Jack is a great helper. He understands that his brother likes this girl. So he deliberately stopped to give the man opportunity. With Jack's encouragement, Nick finally found the courage to say yes to Sally's invitation and take the address of where they would meet. It was the day of the American astronaut moon landing. When they got home, Nick took out the model of the lunar module he had made. He was careful to please his father, who was watching the live broadcast. Jack also came back for a rare visit. So he Saturday in front of the TV with the family. They listened quietly to the countdown on the screen while his mother nervously placed her hand on her husband's body. This scene took Jack back to his childhood. Back then, his father wasn't an alcoholic, and the family knew this kind of domestic bliss. But it did not last long. After becoming an alcoholic, his father became a totally different person. Since then, the darkness of domestic violence has swallowed the family. After dinner, Jack urged his brother to move out of his parents' house. After all, he is in his 20s and should have his own career and love story. Instead of being treated like a dog by his father all day long, but Nick still prefers to stay at home. Because as long as he was home, his father's attitude toward his mother would be much softer. Jack had no choice but to tell him to keep hold of his heart from love. In the evening, Nick met with the girl he fancied just as they planned. Sally was very excited to show her car to him. She loves traveling and photography. Her car was full of photos documenting her experiences over the years. Helping they get to know the girl a little better. In the bright moonlight, they spill their hearts and gradually confirm their feelings for each other. After a period of relationship, Sally proposed to take a trip with Nick and find a city she might want to stay in. Nick was hesitant at first, but after listening to the route and blueprint Sally described to him, he couldn't help but feel an urge to do the same. My grandma Pearl used to say, Sweetie, you can do anything you want with your life or you can do nothing. Yeah. The two agreed to meet here on Wednesday night. To prevent himself from backing out, Nick planned to wait for his parents to go to bed and then sneak out quietly. His brother Jack also supported his decision and prepared a large suitcase for him, hoping he would enjoy the rest of the trip. But Nick was still apprehensive about this unknown journey. He knew that he might not be back for a long time. At this moment, the TV is showing the astronauts return. It was almost the chosen meeting time, but his father showed no sign of turning off the TV. He changed his usual impatience and told his son about how he watched TV with his parents when he was a child. Looking at his father's emotional look and the expression on his mother's face as she held his hand tightly, Nick suddenly lost the courage to leave. He was afraid that once he left, his mother would fall back into that abyss of endless nightmares. And so, Nick lost Sally forever. Sally could never wait for the answer she wanted. Soon after, the Vietnam War broke out and Nick was unfortunately drafted into the arm depressed. He became addicted to drugs he should never have touched. The brutality of war also made it impossible for him to face his family. After he was discharged, he lived alone in an RV and closed himself off for 50 years. Jack was so disappointed in his brother that he lied to his wife and children that he had died on the battlefield. Until a coincidence, Jack's children found Nick again and showed him the domestic warmth he had never known. That's how he gradually emerged from the depths of his depression. In fact, over the years, Nick has not given up looking for Sally. He has searched social media platforms and finally found her account, leading him to make a bold decision. 